Section 1 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G.K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Matthew Stephen To F.C. In Memoriam Palestine, 19 Do you remember one immortal lost moment out of time and space? What time we thought who passed the portal of that divine disastrous place? Where life was slain and truth was slandered on that one holier hill than Rome, how far abroad our bodies wandered that evening when our souls came home. The mystic city, many gated, with monstrous columns was your own. Herodian stones fell down and waited two thousand years to be your throne. In the grey rocks the burning blossoms glowed terrible as a sacred blood. It was no stranger to your bosom than bluebells of an English wood. Do you remember a road that follows the way of unforgotten feet, where from the waste of rocks and hollows climb up the crawling crooked street, the stages of one towering drama, always ahead and out of sight? Do you remember Aseldama and the jekyll barking in the night? Life is not void of stuff for scoffers. We have laughed loud and kept our love. We have heard singers in tavern corners and not forgotten the birds above. We have known smitters and sons of thunder, and not unworthily walked with them. We have grown wiser and lost no wonder, and we have seen Jerusalem. End of section 1. This recording is in the public domain. Section 2 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G.K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Angie Liu The Ballad of St. Barbara St. Barbara is the patron saint of artillery and of those in danger of sudden death. When the long gray lines came flooding upon Paris in the plain, we stood and drank of the last free air we never could taste again. They had led us back from the lost battle to halt we knew not where, and stilled us, and our gaping guns were dumb with our despair the great tribes flowed for ever from the infinite lifeless lands and a norman to a breton spoke his chin upon his hands there was an end to ilium and an end came to rome and a man plays on a painted stage in the land that he calls home arch after arch of triumph but floor beyond falling floor that led to a low door at last and beyond there is no door and the breton to the norman spoke like a small child spoke he and his sea-blue eyes were empty as his home beside the sea there are more windows in one house than there are eyes to see there are more doors in a man's house but god has hid the key ruin is a builder of windows her legend witnesseth barbara the saint of gunners and a day in sudden death it seemed the wheel of the world stood still an instant in its turning more than the kings of the earth that turned with the turning of balmy mill while trickled the idle tail and the sea-blue eyes were burning still as the heart of a whirlwind the heart of the world stood still barbara the beautiful had praise of lute and pen her hair was like a summer night dark and desired of men her feet like birds from far away that linger in light and doubt and her face was like a window where a man's first love looked out her sire was master of many slaves a hard man of his hands they built a tower about her in the desolate golden lands sealed as the tyrants sealed their tombs planned with an ancient plan and set two windows in the tower like the two eyes of a man our guns were set toward the foe we had no word for firing gray in the gateway of st gone the guard of the tyrant shone dark with the fate of a falling star retiring and retiring the breton line went backward and the breton tale went on her father had sailed across the sea from the harbour of africa when all the slaves took up their tools for the bidding of barbara she smote the bare wall with her hand and bade them smite again she poured them wealth of wine and meat to stay them in their pain and cried through the lifted thunder of thronging hammer and hod throw open the third window in the third name of god then the hearts failed and the tools fell, and far towards the foam men saw a shadow on the sands, and her father coming home. Speak low and low along the line, the whispered word is flying. Before the touch, before the time, we may not lose a breath. Their guns must smash us to the mire, and there be no replying, till the hand is raised to fling us for the final dice to death. There were two windows in your tower, Barbara, Barbara, 
for all between the sun and moon in the lands of Africa. Hath a man three eyes, Barbara, a bird three wings, that you have riven roof and wall to look upon vain things. Her voice was like a wandering thing that falters yet is free, whose soul has drunk in a distant land of the rivers of liberty. There are more wings than the wind knows, or eyes than see the sun, in the light of the lost window, in the wind of the doors undone. For out of the first lattice are the red lands that break, and out of the second lattice see like a green snake. But out of the third lattice, under low eaves like wings, is a new corner of the sky and the other side of things. It opened in the inmost place, an instant beyond uttering, a casement and a chasm, and a thunder of doors undone, a seraph of strong wings shaken out of the shock of its unshuttering that split the shattered sunlight from a light behind the sun. Then he drew sword and drave her where the judges sat and said, Caesar sits above the gods, Barbara the maid. Caesar hath made a treaty with the moon and with the sun. All the gods that men can praise, praise him every one. There is peace with an anointed of the scarlet oils of Bel, with the fish god where the whirlpool is a winding stair to hell, with the pathless pyramids of slime where the mitred negro lifts to his black cherub in the cloud abominable gifts with the leper's silver cities, where the dumb priests dance and nod, but not with the three windows in the last name of God. They are firing, we are falling, and the red skies rend and shiver us. Barbara, Barbara, we may not loose a breath. Be at the bursting doors of doom, and in the dark deliver us, who loosened the last window on the sun of sudden death. Barbara the beautiful stood up as queen set free, whose mouth is set to a terrible cup and the trumpet of liberty. I have looked forth from a window that no man now shall bar. Caesar's toppling battle towers shall never stretch so far. The slaves are dancing in their chains, the child laughs at the rod, because of the bird of the three wings and the third face of God. The sword upon his shoulder shifted and shone and fell, and Barbara lay very small and crumpled like a shell. What wall upon what hinges turned stands open like a door, too simple for the sight of faith, too huge for human eyes? What light upon what ancient way shines to a far-off floor? the line of the lost land of France, or the plains of paradise. Caesar smiled above the gods. His lip of stone was curled. His iron armies wound like chains round and round the world. And the strong slayer of his own that cut down flesh for grass smiled too and went to his own tower, like a walking tower of brass. And the song seas and the slaves were dumb, and far towards the foam men saw a shadow on the sands, and a father coming home blood of his blood upon the sword stood red but never dry he wiped it slowly till the blade was blue as the blue sky but the blue sky split with a thunder crack spat down a blinding brand and all of them lay back and flat as his shadow on the sand the touch and the tornado all our guns give tongue together saint barbara for the gunnery and god defend the right they are stopped and gapped and battered as we blast away the weather building window upon window to our lady of the light for the light has come on liberty, her foes are falling, falling. They are reeling, they are running, as the shameful years have run. She has risen for all the humble, she has heard the conquered calling. St. Barbara of the Gunners, with her hand upon the gun, they are burst asunder in the midst that eat of their own flatteries, whose lip is curled to order, as its barbered hair is curled. Blast of the beauty of sudden death, St. Barbara of the Batteries, that blow the new white window in the wall of all the world. For the hand is raised behind us, and the bolt smites hard, through the rending of the doorways, through the death gap of the guard. For the cry of the three colors is in Condé and beyond, and the guard is flung for carrion in the graveyard of St. Gond. Through Mondemont and out of it, through Morin, Marsh and on, with earthquake of salutation the impossible thing is gone. Gaul charioted and charging, Great gall upon a gun, tiptoe on all her thousand ears and trumpeting to the sun. As day returns, as death returns, swung backwards and swung home. Back on the barbarous rain returns the battering ram of Rome. While that the east held hard and hot like pincers in a forge, came like the west wind roaring upon the cannon of St. George. Where the hunt is up and racing over stream and swamp and tarn, and their batteries, black with battle, hold the bridgeheads of the Marne. And across the carnage of the guard, by Paris in the plain, the Normans to the Bretons cried, and the Bretons cheered again. But he that told the tale went home to his house beside the sea, and burned before St. Barbara, the light of the windows three. Three candles were an unknown thing, never to come again. 
that opened like the eye of God on Paris in the plain. End of section two. This recording is in the public domain. Section three of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Leah. Elegy in a Country Churchyard The men that worked for England, they have their graves at home, And bees and birds of England about the cross can roam. But they that fought for England, following a falling star, Alas, alas, for England, they have their graves afar. And they that rule in England, in stately conclave met, Alas, alas, for England, they have no graves as yet. End of section three. This recording is in the public domain. Section four of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Tracy. The Sword of Surprise. Sunder me from my bones, O sword of God, Till they stand stark and strange as do the trees, That I, whose heart goes up with the soaring woods, May marvel as much at these. Sunder me from my blood, That in the dark I hear that red ancestral river run, Like branching buried floods that find the sea, But never see the sun. Give me miraculous eyes to see my eyes, Those rolling mirrors made alive in me, Terrible crystal, more incredible than all the things they see. Sunder me from my soul, That I may see the sins like streaming wounds, The life's brave beat, Till I shall save myself, As I would save a stranger in the street. End of section 4 this recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tracy. Section 5 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Justin Brett. A Wedding in Wartime. Our God, who made two lovers in a garden and smote them separate and set them free, their four eyes wild for wonder and wrath and pardon, And their kiss thunder as lips of land and sea, Each wrapped unendingly beyond the other, Two starry worlds of unknown gods at war, Wife and not mate, a man and not a brother, We thank thee thou hast made us what we are. Make not the grey slime of infinity To swamp these flowers thou madest one by one, let not the night that was thine enemy Mix a mad twilight of the moon and sun, Waken again to thunderclap and clamour The wonder of our sundering and the song, Or break our hearts with thine hell-shattering hammer, But leave a shade between us all day long. Shade of high shame and honourable blindness, When youth, in storm of dizzy and distant things, Finds the wild windfall of a little kindness, And shakes to think that all the world has wings. When the one head that turns the heavens, In turning moves yet as lightly as a lingering bird, And red, and random, blown astray, But burning like a lost spark, Goes by the glorious word. Make not this sex, this other side of things, A thing less distant than the world's desire. What colour to the end of evening clings, And what far cry of frontiers, And what fire fallen too far beyond the sun for seeking, Let it divide us, though our kingdom come, With a far signal in our secret speaking, To hang the proud horizon in our home. Once we were one, a shapeless cloud that lingers loading the seas and shutting out the skies, one with the woods, a monster of myriad fingers, you laid on me no finger of surprise, one with the stars, 
a god with myriad eyes, I saw you nowhere, and was blind for scorn, one till the world was riven, and the rise of the white days when you and I were born. Darkens the world, the world old fetters rattle, and these that have no hope behind the sun may feed like bondmen, and may breed like cattle, one in the darkness, as the dead are one. Us, if the rended grave give up its glory, trumpets shall summon asunder, and face to face we will be strangers in so strange a story, and wonder, meeting in so wild a place. Ah, not in vain, or utterly for loss, come even the black flag and the battle hordes, if these grey devils flee the sign of the cross, even in the symbol of the crossing swords. Nor shall death doubt, who made our souls alive, swords meeting and not stakes set side by side, bade us in the sunburst and the thunder thrive, earthquake and dawn, the bridegroom and the bride. Death, and not dreams, or doubt of things undying, of whose the holy hearth, or whose the sword. Though sacred spirits dissever in strong crying into thy hands, but thy two hands, O Lord, Though not in earth, as once in Eden standing, so plain again, we see thee what thou art, as in this blaze, the blasting and the branding of this wild wedding, where we meet and part. End of section 5. This recording is in the public domain. Section 6 of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton, read for LibriVox.org by Ellie. The Mystery If sunset clouds could grow on trees, it would but match the main flower, and skies be underneath the seas, no topsy turvier than a shower. If mountains rose on wings to wander, there were no wilder than a cloud, yet all my praises mean as slander, mean as this mean words spoken aloud. And never more than now I know, that man's first heaven is far behind, unless the blazing seraph's blow has left him in the garden blind. Witness, O sun, that blinds our eyes, unsinkable and unsinkable king, that all other wonder dies, a wonder at not wandering. End of section 6. This recording is in the public domain. Section 7 of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Amy Graymore. The Myth of Arthur. O learned man who never learned to learn, save to deduce by timid steps and small, from towering smoke that fire can never burn, and from tall tales that men were never tall. Say, have you thought what manner of man it is, of whom men say he could strike giants down? Or what strong memories over time's abyss Bore up the pomp of Camelot and the crown? And why one banner all the background fills Beyond the pageants of so many spears? And by what witchery in the western hills A throne stands empty for a thousand years? Who hold, unheeding this immense impact, Immortal story for a mortal sin? Lest human fable touch historic fact, Chase myths like moths, and fight them with a pin. Take comfort, rest, there needs not this ado. You shall not be a myth, I promise you. End of section 7. This recording is in the public domain. Section 8 of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Amanda Potter of AmandaPotter.com The Old Song on the Embankment in Stormy Weather A livid sky on London, and like iron steers that rear, A shock of engines halted, and I knew the end was near. And something said that far away, over the hills and far away, There came a crawling thunder, and the end of all things here. For London Bridge is broken down, broken down, broken down, as digging lets the daylight on the sunken streets of yore. 
The lightning looked on London town, the broken bridge of London town, the ending of a broken road where men shall go no more. I saw the kings of London town, the kings that buy and sell, that built it up with penny loaves and penny lies as well, and where the streets were paved with gold, the shriveled paper shone for gold, that scorching light of promises that paved the streets of hell. For penny loaves will melt away, melt away, melt away, mock the mean that haggled in the grain they did not grow. With hungry faces in the gate, a hundred thousand in the gate, a thunder flashed on London in the finding of the foe. I heard the hundred pin-makers slow down their racking din, till in the silence men could hear the dropping of a pin. And somewhere men without the wall, beneath the wood without the wall, had found the place where London ends in England can begin. For pins and needles bend and break, bend and break, bend and break, faster than the breaking spears or the bending of the bow. Of pageants pale and thunder light, twixt thunder load and thunder light, the hundreds marching on the hills in the wars of long ago. I saw great Colbert riding, the horsemen of the shires, and his face was red with judgment and a light of Luddite fires. And south to Sussex and the sea the lights leapt up for liberty, the trumpet of the yeoman, the hammer of the squire, for bars of iron rust away, rust away, rust away, rend before the hammer and the horseman riding in, crying that all men at the last and at the worst and at the last have found the place where England ends and England can begin. His horse hooves go before you, far beyond your bursting tires, and time is bridged behind him, and our sons are with our sires. A trailing meteor on the downs, he rides above the rotting towns, the horseman of apocalypse, the rider of the shire. For London Bridge is broken down, broken down, broken down, below the horn of Huntington from Scotland to the sea. Only a flash of thunder-light, a flying dream of thunder-light, has shone under the shattered sky a people that were free. End of section 8 This recording is in the public domain. Section 9 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Bishop The Trinkets A wandering world of rivers, a wavering world of trees. If the world grow dim and dizzy with all changes and degrees, it is but Our Lady's mirror hung dreaming in its place, shining with only shadows till she wakes it with her face. The standing whirlpool of the stars, the wheel of all the world, is a ring on Our Lady's finger with the suns and moons impearled, with stars for stones to please her, who sits playing with her rings, with the great heart that a woman has, and the love of little things. Wings of the whirlwind of the world from here to Ispahan, spurning the flying forests are light as Our Lady's fan. For all things violent here and vain lie opened and all at ease, where God has girded heaven to guard her holy vanities. End of section 9. This recording is in the public domain. Section 10 of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by David Lawrence. The Philanthropist, with apologies to a beautiful poem. Abu ben Adam, may his tribe decrease by cautious birth control and die in peace. Mello, with learning, lightly took the word that marked him not with them that loved the Lord, and told the angel of the book and pen, Write me as one that loves his fellow men. For them alone I labor to reclaim the ragged, roaming Bedouin and to tame to ordered service, to uproot their vine who mock the prophet, being mad with wine. Let daylight through their tents and through their lives, number their camels, even count their wives. Plot out the desert into streets and squares, and count it a more fruitful work than theirs who lift a vain and visionary love to your vague Allah in the skies above. Gently replied the angel of the pen, Labor in peace, and love your fellow men, and love not God, since men alone are dear. Only fear God, for you have cause to fear. 
End of section 10. This recording is in the public domain. Section 11 of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses Read for LibriVox.org by Gail Cato On the Downs When you came over the top of the world In the great day of the Downs The air was crisp and the clouds were curled When you came over the top of the world And under your feet were spire and street And seven English towns And I could not think that pride was perished as you came over the down liberty chivalry all we cherished lost in the rattle of pelf and perished or the land we love that you walked above withering town by town for you came out on the dome of the earth like a vision of victory out on the great green dome of the earth as the great blue dome of the sky for girth and under your feet the shires could meet and your eyes went out to see. Under your feet the towns were seven, Alive and alone on high, Your back to the broad white wall of heaven, You were one, and the towns were seven, Single and one as the soaring sun, And your head upheld the sky. And I thought of a thundering flag unfurled, And the roar of the burghers bell, Beacons crackled and bolts were hurled, As you came over the top of the world. And under your feet were chance and cheat, And the slime of the slopes of hell. It has not been, as the great wind spoke, On the great green down that day. We have seen, wherever the wide wind spoke, Slavery, slaying the English folk. The robbers of land we have seen command, The rulers of land obey. We have seen the gigantic golden worms In the garden of paradise. We have seen the great and the wise make terms With the peace of snakes and the pride of worms, And them that plant make covenant With the locusts and the lice. And the wind blows, and the world goes on, And the world can say That we who stood on the cliffs where the quarries shone Stood upon clouds that the sun shone on, And the clouds dissunder and drown in thunder The news that will never be. Lady of all that have loved the people, Light over roads astray, Maze of steading and street and steeple, Great as a heart that has loved the people, Stand on the crown of the storing down, Lift up your arms and pray. Only you I have not forgotten, For wreck of the world's renown, Rending and ending of things gone rotten, Only the face of you unforgotten, and your head up thrown in the skies alone as you came over the down. End of section 11. This recording is in the public domain. Section 12 of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Kenny B. The Red Sea. Our souls shall be leviathans in purple seas of wine, when drunkenness is dead with death, and drink is all divine. Learning in those immortal vats what mortal vineyards mean, or only in heaven we shall know how happy we have been. Like clouds that wallow in the wind, be free to drift and drink. Tower without insolence when we rise, without surrender sink. Dreams dizzy and crazy we shall know, and have no need to write. Our blameless blasphemies of praise, our nightmares of delight. For so in such misshapen shape the vision came to me, where such titanian dolphin start rolls in a sunset sea. Dark with dense colors, strange and strong, as terrible true love, haloed like fish in phosphor light, the holy monsters move. Measure is here and law to learn, when honor rules it so, to lift the glass and lay it down, or break the glass and go. But when the world's new deluge boils from the new Noah's vine, our souls shall be leviathans in sanguine seas of wine. 
End of section 12. This recording is in the public domain. Section 13 of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Wilcox. For a War Memorial. Suggested inscription, probably not selected by the committee. The hucksters haggle in the mart. The cars and carts go by. Senates and schools go droning on. But dead things cannot die. A storm stooped on the place of tombs with bolts to blast and rive. But these be names of many men, the lightning found alive. If users rule, and rights decay, and visions view once more, great Carthage like a golden shell, cape hollow on the shore, still to the last of crumbling time, upon this stone be read, how many men of England died, to prove they were not dead. End of section 13. This recording is in the public domain. Section 14 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Ellie Memory If I ever go back to Baltimore, the city of Maryland, I shall miss again as I missed before a thousand things of the world in store, the story standing in every door, the beckons with every hand. I shall not know where the bonds were riven, and a hundred faces set free, where the wandering cavalier had given her hundred's name to the Queen of Heaven, and made oblation of feuds forgiven to our lady of liberty i shall not travel the tracks of fame where the war was not to the strong when lee the last of the heroes came with the man of the south in the flag like flame and called the land by its lovely name in the unforgotten song if i ever cross the sea and stray to the city of maryland i will sit on a stone and watch or pray for a stranger's child that was there one day and the child will never come back to play and no one will understand End of section 14. This recording is in the public domain. Section 15 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Mullane. The English Graves. Were I that wandering citizen whose city is the world, I would not weep for all that fell before the flags were furled. I would not let one murmur mar the trumpets volleying forth, how God grew weary of the kings and the cold hell in the north. But we whose hearts are homing birds have heavier thoughts of home, though the great eagles burn with gold on Paris or on Rome, who stand beside our dead and stare, like seers at an eclipse, at the riddle of the island tale and the twilight of the ships. For these were simple men, that loved with hands and feet and eyes, whose souls were humbled to the hills and narrowed to the skies, the hundred little lands within one little land that lie, where Severn seeks the sunset isles, or Sussex scales the sky. And what is theirs, though banners blow on Warsaw risen again, or ancient laughter walks in gold through the vineyards of Lorraine? Their dead are marked on English stones, their loves on English trees. How little is the prize they win, how mean a coin for these, how small a shriveled laurel leaf lies crumpled here and curled. They died to save their country, and they only save the world. End of section 15. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mullane. Section 16 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Bishop Nightmare The silver and violet leopard of the night Spotted with stars and smooth with silence sprang, And though three doors stood open, The end of light closed like a trap, And stillness was a clang. Under the leopard sky of lurid stars I strove with evil sleep the hot night long, Dreams dumb and swollen of triumphs without wars, Of tongueless trumpet and unanswered gong. I saw a pale imperial pomp go by, Helmet and horned mitre and heavy wreath, Their high strange ensigns hung upon the sky, And their great shields were like the doors of death. 
Their mitres were as moving pyramids, and all their crowns as marching towers were tall. Their eyes were cold under their carven lids, and the same carven smile was on them all. Over a paven plain that seemed unending, they passed unfaltering till it found an end in one long shallow step, and these descending fared forth anew as long a way to wend. I thought they travelled for a thousand years, and at the end was nothing for them all for all that splendour of sceptres and spears, but a new step, another easy fall. The smile of stone seemed but a little less, the load of silver but a little more, and ever was that terraced wilderness and falling plain paved like a palace floor. Rust red as gore crawled on their arms of might, and on their faces wrinkles and not scars, till the dream suddenly ended, noise and light loosened the tyranny of the tropic stars. But over them like a subterranean sun I saw the sign of all the fiends that fell, and a wild voice cried, Hasten and be done, is there no steepness in the stairs of hell? He that returns, he that remains the same, turned the round real world, his iron vice. Down the grey garden paths a bird called twice, and through three doors mysterious daylight came. End of section 16. This recording is in the public domain. Section 17 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Gail Cato. A second childhood. When all my days are ending, and I have no song to sing, I think I shall not be too old to stare at everything, as I once stared at a nursery door, or a tall tree and a swing, wherein God's ponderous mercy hangs on all my sins and me, because he does not take away the terror from the tree, and stones still shine along the road that are and cannot be. Men grow too old for love, my love, men grow too old for wine, but I shall not grow too old to see unearthly daylight shine, changing my chamber's dust to snow, till I doubt if it be mine. Behold the crowning mercies melt, the first surprises stay, and in my dross is dropped a gift for which I dare not pray, that a man grow used to grief and joy, but not to night and day. Men grow too old for love, my love, men grow too old for lies, but I shall not grow too old to see enormous night arise, a cloud that is larger than the world, and a monster made of eyes, nor am I worthy to unloose the latchet of my shoe, or shake the dust from off my feet, or the staff that bears me through on ground that is too good to last, too solid to be true. Men grow too old to woo, my love, men grow too old to wed, but I shall not grow too old to see hung crazily overhead incredible rafters when I wake and find I am not dead. A thrill of thunder in my hair, though blackening clouds be plain, still I am stung and startled by the first drops of the rain. Romance and pride and passion pass, and these are what remain. Strange crawling carpets of the grass, Wide windows of the sky, So in this perilous grace of God With all my sins go I, And things grow new, though I grow old, Though I grow old and die. End of section 17 This recording is in the public domain. Section 18 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Justin Bread. Medievalism If men should rise and return to the noise and time of the tawny, the name and fame of the tabard, the tangle of gules and gold, would these things stand and suffice for the bourne of a backward journey? a light on our days returning, as it was in the days of old. 
nay, there is none rides back to pick up a glove or a feather, though the gauntlet rang with honour, or the plume was more than a crown, and hushed is the holy trumpet that called the nations together, and under the horns of Hattin the hope of the world went down. Ah, not in remembrance stored, but out of oblivion starting, because you have sought new homes, and all that you sought is so, because you had trodden the fire, and barred the door in departing, returns in your chosen exile the glory of long ago. Not then when you barred the door, not then when you trod the embers, but now, at your new road's end, you have seen the face of a fate that not as a child looks back, and not as a fool remembers, all that men took too lightly, and all that they love too late. It is you that have made no rubric for saints, no raiment for lovers, your caps that cry for a feather, your roofs that sigh for a spire. Is it a dream from the dead, if your own decay discovers alive in your rotting graveyard the worm of the world's desire? Therefore the old trees tower, that the green trees grow and are stunted. Therefore these dead men mock you, that you the living are dead, since ever you battered the saints and the tools of your crafts were blunted, or shattered the glass in its glory, and loaded yourselves with the lead. When the usurer hunts the squire, as the squire has hunted the peasant, as sheep that are eaten of worms where men were eaten of sheep, now is the judgment of earth and the weighing of past and present, who scorn to weep over ruins, behold your ruin, and weep. Have ye not known, ye fools, that have made the present a prison, that thirst can remember water, and hunger remember bread? We went not gathering ghosts, but the shriek of your shame is arisen out of your own black babel too loud, and it woke the dead. End of section 18. This recording is in the public domain. Section 19 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Liz Morant March 10, 2011, Port Ritchie, Florida Section 19, Poland Augurs that watched archaic birds Such plumed prodigies might read The eagles that were double-faced The eagle that was black, indeed And when the battle-birds went down and in their track the vultures come, we know what pardon and what peace will keep our little masters dumb. The men that sell what others make, as vultures eat what others slay, will prove in matching plume with plume that naught is black and all is gray, gray as those dingy doves that once, by money-changers, palmed and priced, amid the crash of tables flapped and huddled from the wrath of christ but raised for ever for a sign since god made anger glorious where eagles black and vultures gray flocked back about the heroic house where war is holier than peace where hate is holier than love shone terrible as the holy ghost an eagle whiter than a dove. End of section 19. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Liz Morant, Port Ritchie, Florida. Liz Morant at gmail.com. Section 20 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Justin Brett. THE HUNTING OF THE DRAGON When we went hunting the dragon, in the days when we were young, we tossed the bright world over our shoulder as bugle and baldric slung. Never was world so wild and fair as what went by on the wind, never such fields of paradise as the fields we left behind. 
For this is the best of a rest for men, that men should rise and ride, making a flying fairyland of market and countryside, wings on the cottage, wings on the wood, wings upon pot and pan, for the hunting of the dragon, that is the life of a man. For men grow weary of fairyland when the dragon is a dream, and tire of the talking bird in the tree, the singing fish in the stream. And the wandering stars grow stale, grow stale, and the wonder is stiff with scorn, for this is the honour of fairyland, and the following of the horn. Beauty on beauty called us back, when we could rise and ride, and a woman looked out of every window as wonderful as a bride, and the tavern sign as a tabard blazed, and the children cheered and ran, for the love of the hate of the dragon. That is the pride of a man. The sages called him a shadow, and the light went out of the sun, and the wise men told us that all was well, and all was weary and won. And then, and then, in the quiet garden, with never a weed to kill, we knew that his shining tail had shone in the white road over the hill. We knew that the clouds were flakes of flame, we knew that the sunset fire was red with the blood of the dragon, whose death is the world's desire. For the horn was blown in the heart of the night, that men should rise and ride, keeping the tryst of a terrible jest, never for long untried, drinking a dreadful blood for wine, never in cup or can, the death of a deathless dragon. That is the life of a man. End of section 20. This recording is in the public domain. Section 21 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Kenny B. Sonnet high on the wall that holds Jerusalem, I saw one stand under the stars like stone, and when I perish it shall not be known whether he lived some strolling son of Shem, or was some great ghost wearing the diadem of Solomon or Saladin on a throne. I only know the features being unshown, I did not dare draw near and look on them. Did ye not guess the diadem might be plated in stranger style by hands of hate? But when I looked, the wall was desolate, and the gray starlight powdered tower and tree, and vast and vague beyond the golden gate, heaved Moab of the mountains like a sea. End of section 21. This recording is in the public domain. Section 22 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Liz Morant, March 10, 2011, Port Ritchie, Florida. Fantasia. The happy men that lose their heads, they find their heads in heaven as cherub heads with cherub wings, and cherub halos even. Out of the infinite evening lands, along the sunset sea, leaving the purple fields behind, the cherub wings beat down the wind, back to the groping body, and blind as the bird back to the tree. Whether the plumes be passion red, for him that truly dies, by headsman's blade, or battle-axe, or blue like butterflies, for him that lost it in a lane, in April's fits and starts. His folly is forgiven then, but higher, and far beyond our ken, is the healing of the unhappy men, the men that lost their hearts. Is there not pardon for the brave, and broad release above, who lost their heads for liberty, or lost their hearts for love? Or is the wise man wise indeed, whom larger thoughts keep whole? who sees life equal like a chart, made strong to play the saner part, and keep his head and keep his heart, 
and only lose his soul. End of section 19. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Elizabeth Morant, Port Ritchie, Florida. LizMorant at gmail.com Section 23 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton, read for LibriVox.org by Penelope Greenwell on March 6, 2011. A Christmas Carol The Chief Constable has issued a statement declaring that carol singing in the streets by children is illegal and morally and physically injurious. He appeals to the public to discourage the practice. Daily Paper God rest you merry, gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. The herald angels cannot sing. The cops arrest them on the wing, and warn them of the docketing of anything they say. God rest you merry, gentlemen, may nothing you dismay. On your reposeful cities lie, deep silence, broken only by the motor horn's melodious cry, the hooter's happy bray. So when the song of children ceased, and Herod was obeyed, in his high hall Corinthian, with purple and with peacock fan, rested that merry gentleman, and nothing him dismayed. End of section 23. This recording is in the public domain. Section 24 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Winston Tharp. To Captain Fryatt Trampled yet red is the last of the embers, Red the last cloud of a sun that has set. What of your sleeping, though Flanders remembers? What of your waking, if England forget? Why should you share in the hearts that we harden, In the shame of our nature who see it and live? How more than the godly the greedy can pardon, how well and how quickly the hungry forgive. Ah, well, if the soil of the stranger had wrapped you, while the lords that you served and the friends that you knew hawk in the marts of the tyrants that trapped you, tout in the shops of the butchers that slew. Why should you wake for a realm that is rotten, stuffed with their bribes and is dead to their debts? Sleep and forget us as we have forgotten. For Flanders remembers, and England forgets. End of section 24. This recording is in the public domain. Section 25 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Bishop. Section 25. For four guilds. 1. The Glass Stainers. To every man his mystery, a trade and only one. The masons make the hives of men, the domes of grey or dun. But we have wrought in rose and gold the houses of the sun. The shipwrights build the houses high, whose green foundations sway, alive with fish like little flames when the wind goes out to slay but we abide with painted sails the cyclone of the day. The weavers make the clothes of men and coats for every one. They walk the streets like sunset clouds, but we have woven and spun, in scarlet or in golden green, the gay coats of the sun. You whom the usurers and the lords with insolent liveries trod, deep in dark church behold, above their lance lengths by a rod, where we have blazed the tabard of the trumpeter of God. End of section 25. This recording is in the public domain. Section 26 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Bishop. Section 26 for Four Guilds. 2. The Bridge Builders. In the world's whitest morning, as hoary with hope, the builder of bridges was priest and was pope, and the mitre of mystery and the canopy his, who darkened the chasms 
and domed the abyss. To eastward and westward spread wings at his word, the arch with the keystone that stoops like a bird, that rides the wild air and the daylight cast under, the highway of danger, the gateway of wonder. Of his throne were the thunders that rivet and fix, wild weddings of strangers that meet and not mix, the town and the cornland, the bride and the groom, in the breaking of bridges is treason and doom. But he bade us who fashion the road that can fly, that we build not too heavy and build not too high, seeing all way that under the dark arches bend, shine death and white daylight unchanged to the end. Who walk on his mercy walk light as he saith, seeing that our life is a bridge above death, and the world and its gardens and hills, as ye heard, are borne above space on the wings of a bird. Not high and not heavy is building of his, when ye seal up the flood and forget the abyss, when your towers are uplifted, your banners unfurled, in the breaking of bridges is the end of the world. End of section 26. This recording is in the public domain. Section 27 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Bishop Section 27 For Four Guilds 3. The Stonemasons We have graven the mountain of God with hands, as our hands were graven of God, they say. Where the seraphs burn in the sun like brands, and the devils carry the rains away. Making a thrift of the throats of hell, our gargoyles gather the roaring rain, whose yawn is more than a frozen yell, and their very vomiting not in vain. Wilder than all that a tongue can utter, wiser than all that is told in words, the wings of stone of the soaring gutter fly out and follow the flight of birds. The rush and rout of the angel wars stand out above the astounded street, where we flung our gutters against the stars, for a sign that the first and the last shall meet. We have graven the forest of heaven with hands, being great with a mirth too gross for pride. In the stone that battered him Stephen stands, and Peter himself is petrified. Such hands as have grubbed in the glebe for bread, have bidden the blank rock blossom and thrive. Such hands as have stricken a live man dead, have struck and stricken the dead alive. Fold your hands before heaven in praying, lift up your hands into heaven and cry, but look where our dizziest spires are saying what the hands of a man did up in the sky. Drenched before you have heard the thunder, white before you have felt the snow, for the giants lift up their hands to wonder how high the hands of a man could go. End of section 27. This recording is in the public domain. Section 28 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Peter Bishop Section 28 For Four Guilds 4. The Bell Ringers The angels are singing like birds in a tree In the organ of good St. Cecily And the parson reads with his hand upon The graven eagle of great St. John but never the fluted pipe shall go Like the fifes of an army all a row, Merrily marching down the street To the marts where the busy and idle meet. And never the brazen bird shall fly Out of the window and into the sky, Till men in cities and shires and ships Look up at the living apocalypse. But all can hark at the dark of even The bells that bay like the hounds of heaven, Tolling and telling that over and under in the ways of the air like a wandering thunder. The hunt is up over hills untrod, for the wind is the way of the dogs of God, from the tyrant's tower to the outlaw's den, hunting the souls of the sons of men, ruler and robber and peddler and peer, who will not hearken and yet will hear, filling men's heads with the hurry and hum, making them welcome before they come. And we poor men stand under the steeple, drawing the cords that can draw the people, and in our leash like the leaping dogs are God's most deafening demagogues. 
and we are but little like dwarves underground, while hang up in heaven the houses of sound, moving like mountains that faith sets free, yawning like caverns that roar with the sea, as awfully loaded as airily buoyed, armoured archangels that trample the void. Wild as with dancing and weighty with dooms, heavy as their panoply, light as their plumes. Neither preacher nor priest are we, each man mount to his own degree, only remember that just such a chord tosses in heaven the trumpet and sword. Souls on their terraces, saints on their towers, rise up in arms at alarum like ours, glow like great watchfires that redden the skies, titans whose wings are a glory of eyes. Crowned constellations by twelves and by sevens, domed dominations more old than the heavens, virtues that thunder and thrones that endure, sway like a bell to the prayers of the poor. End of section 28. This recording is in the public domain. Section 29 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Josh Castle. The Convert After one moment, when I bowed my head, and the whole world turned over and came upright, and I came out where the old road shone white, I walked the ways and heard what all men said, Forests of tongues, like autumn leaves unshed, Being not unlovable, but strange and light. Old riddles and new creeds, Not in despite, but softly, As men smile about the dead. The sages have a hundred maps to give That trace their crawling cosmos like a tree. They rattle reason out through many a sieve, that stores the sand and lets the gold go free. And all these things are less than dust to me, because my name is Lazarus, and I live. End of section 29. This recording is in the public domain. Section 30 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug Songs of Education Number 1. History Form 991785 Subsection D The Roman threw us a road, a road, and sighed and strode away. The Saxon gave us a raid, a raid, a raid that came to stay. The Dane went west, but the Dane confessed that he went a bit too far, and we all became, by another name, the imperial race we are. Chorus The imperial race, the inscrutable race, the invincible race we are. The Sussex hills are bare, are bare, and Sussex wield is wide, from Chichester to Chester, men saw the Norman ride. He threw his sword in the air and sang to a sort of light guitar. It was all the same, for we all became the identical knobs we are. Chorus The identical knobs, the individual knobs, unmistakable knobs we are. The people lived on the land, the land, they potted about and prayed, they built a cathedral here and there, or went on a small crusade, till the bones of Becket were bundled out for the fun of a fat white czar, and we all became, in spoil and flame, the intelligent lot we are. Chorus The intelligent lot, the intuitive lot, the infallible lot we are. O oh, Warwick woods are green, are green, but Warwick trees can fall, and Birmingham grew so big, so big, and Stratford stayed so small, till the hooter howled to the morning lark that sang to the morning star, and we all became, in freedom's name, the fortunate chaps we are. Chorus 
the fortunate chaps, felicitous chaps, the fairy-like chaps we are. The people, they left the land, the land, but they went on working hard, and the village green that had got mislaid turned up in the squire's back yard. But twenty men of us all got work on a bit of his motor-car, and we all became, with the world's acclaim, the marvellous mugs we are. Chorus The marvellous mugs, miraculous mugs, the mystical mugs we are. End of section 30. This recording is in the public domain. Section 31 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug. Songs of Education. Number 2. Geography. Form 17955301. Subsection Z. The earth is a place on which England is found, and you'll find it however you twirl the globe around, for the spots are all red and the rest is all grey, and that is the meaning of Empire Day. Gibraltar's a rock that you see very plain, and attached to its base is the district of Spain, and the island of Malta is marked further on where some natives were known as the knights of st john then cyprus and east to the suez canal that was conquered by dizzy and rothschild his pal with the sword of the lord in the old english way and that is the meaning of empire day our principal imports come far as cape horn for necessities cocoa for luxuries corn thus brahmins are born for the rice field and thus the gods made the greeks to grow currants for us tobacco and petrol and jazzing and jews the jazzing will pass but the jews they will stay and that is the meaning of empire day our principal exports all labelled and packed at the ends of the earth are delivered intact our soap or our salmon can travel in tins between the two poles and as like as two pins so that the lancashire merchants wherever they like can water the beer of a man in klondike or poison the meat of a man in bombay and that is the meaning of empire day the day of st george is a musty affair which russians and greeks are permitted to share the day of trafalgar is spanish in name and the Spaniards refused to pronounce it the same. But the day of the empire from Canada came, with Morden and Borden and Beaverbrook's fame, and saintly seraphical souls such as they, and that is the meaning of Empire Day. End of section 31. This recording is in the public domain. Section 32 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug Songs of Education Number 3 For the Crèche Form 8277059 Subsection K I remember my mother the day that we met A thing I shall never entirely forget and I toy with the fancy that, young as I am, I should know her again if we met in a tram. But mother is happy in turning a crank that increases the balance at somebody's bank, and I feel satisfaction that mother is free from the sinister task of attending to me. They have brightened our room that is spacious and cool, with diagrams used in the idiot school, and books for the blind that will teach us to see. But mother is happy, for mother is free, for mother is dancing up forty-eight floors, for love of the Leeds International Stores. And the flame of that faith might perhaps have grown cold, with the care of a baby of seven weeks old. For mother is happy in greasing a wheel for somebody else who is cornering steel, and though our one meeting was not very long, she took the occasion to sing me this song. 
Oh, hush thee, my baby, the time soon will come, when thy sleep will be broken with hooting and hum. There are handles want turning and turning all day, and knobs to be pressed in the usual way. Oh, hush thee, my baby, take rest while I croon, for progress comes early, and freedom too soon. End of section 32. This recording is in the public domain. Section 33 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug Songs of Education Number 4 Citizenship Form 8889512 Subsection Q How slowly learns the child at school The names of all the knobs that rule From Ponsonby to Pennant Ere his bewildered mind find rest, knowing his host can be a guest, his landlord is a tenant. He do not, at the age of three, what Lord St. Ledger next will be, or what he was before. A primrose in the social swim, a Mr. Primrose is to him, and he is nothing more. But soon, about the age of ten, he finds he is a citizen, and knows his way about can pause within, or just beyond, the line twixt mond and demi-mond, twixt getting on or out. The citizen will take his share, in every sense, as bull and bear, nor need this oral ditty invoke the philologic pen to show you that a citizen means something in the city. Thus gains he, with the virile gown, the fasces and the civic crown, the forum of the free. No more to Rome's high law allied is Devonport in all his pride, or Lipton's self, than he. For he will learn, if he will try, the deep interior truth whereby we rule the commonwealth. What is the food controller's fee, and whether the health ministry are in it for their health? End of section 33. This recording is in the public domain. Section 34 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug. Songs of Education. Number 5. The Higher Mathematics. Form 339125. Subsection M. Twice one is two, twice two is four, but twice two is ninety-six if you know the way to score. Half of two is one, half of four is two, but half of four is forty per cent if your name is Montague, for everything else is on the square if done by the best quadratics, and nothing is low in high finance or the higher mathematics. A straight line is straight, and a square mile is flat. But you learn in trigonometrics a trick worth two of that. Two straight lines can't enclose a space, but they can enclose a corner to support the chosen race. For you never know what dynamics do with the lower truths of statics. And half of two is a touring car in the higher mathematics. There is a place apart, beyond the solar ray, where parallel straight lines can meet in an unofficial way. There is a room that holds the examiner or his clerks, where you can square the circle or the man that gives the marks, where you can hide in the cellar and then look down on the poets that live in the attics. For the whole of the house is upside down in the higher mathematics. End of section 34. This recording is in the public domain. Section 35 of The Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton. Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug. Songs of Education. Number 6. Hygiene. Form 39441102. Subsection X. All practical eugenists are agreed on the importance of sleep. 
Eugenic Congress When science taught mankind to breathe a little while ago, only a wise and thoughtful few were really in the know, nor could the youth his features wreathe, puffing from all the lungs beneath, when duty whispered softly, breathe, the youth would answer, blow. When science proved with lucid care the need of exercise, our thoughtless youth was climbing trees, or lightly blacking eyes, to reckless idlers breaking bounds for football or for hare and hounds or fighting hard for fourteen rounds it came as a surprise but when she boldly counsels sleep to persons when in bed then then indeed men blush to see the daybreak blushing red the early risers whom we term healthy grow sickly and infirm the early bird who caught the worm will catch the germ instead for this at least be science praised if all the rest be wrought that now she snubs the priggish child that quits too soon his cot the pharisaic pachyderm of spiritual pride shall squirm the early bird catches the worm the worm that dieth not End of section 35. This recording is in the public domain. End of the Ballad of St. Barbara and Other Verses by G. K. Chesterton.